I have bought a heater, a diesel powered heater that uses diesel to heat air like a fan heater. Um, the diesel ex is exhausted to the exterior of the building or vehicle or whatever it is you're choosing to heat and the uh, hot air from the heat exchanger is blown into the space that you're trying to warm up. Um, as you see it's, com it's branded Vivor, I think they're just a company that sells them. They come from China but Vivor got a big website and I thought that these things are all over the eBay and uh, I want to be buying it from somewhere that if there's a problem I can send it back. So It was £109 delivered, so let's unbox it. Okay, the contents of the box comprises, box comprises of the unit itself, which is, as you can see, it's about 6 inches wide and 16 inches deep and 16 inches high. It's about 400 by 400 by 150 for people who think in metric. Um, there is a exhaust pipe, air intake pipe, air intake filter, exhaust silencer or muffler, a bag of clips and some instructions which will probably be less than comprehensive. Okay, fairly straightforward looking. I've read a few reports on these things. Um, and they are, they're okay, they work quite well it would seem. People have had good experiences with them. So let's just have a little look at the unit itself. I've taken the cover off, uh, I've got to say it's quite flimsy. You know, the, uh, the red metal cover there, which is clipped in place, once it's removed, this all becomes very floppy. So, uh, anyway, there's the diesel tank. There's a little pump, there's some beautifully installed electrical wiring, there's heat exchanger output. This is the unit that does all the work and uh, there's a 12 volt supply cables there. And on the back we have the uh, rating plate such as it is, which is diesel, 12 volts and 8 kilowatts output. So anyway. Uh, I think I'm going to put the cover back on and uh, then build a shelf for it. Okay, installation of the heater has been quite straightforward, a little, a little bit of a faff with the pipe work, but um, I bought some brackets, some 400 millimeter by 400 brackets from Screwfix, they're about 11, 12 pounds. Um, used some old floorboards for the shelf. I bored holes in the shelf to have the air intake and exhaust pipes come up because they're coming through the bottom which is not very handy but um, anyway that's how they work so there's the stainless steel pipe for the exhaust that came with it that exits through the back of the workshop and then um, there's the air intake pipe with a filter on the end which I've clipped in place using the clips or pipe clips or p-clips that came with it um, the only th modification I've had to make is to use better quality Jubilee type clips because the ones that were with it were pretty poor, um, very cheap and didn't really secure it very well. Um, there is a nice little remote with it and of course there's the power supply which is going to be a 12 volt battery initially. I need to get a couple of good quality crocodile clips to uh, uh, put on the ends of this cable which is just bare wires for that job. and. Um, I think uh, that has gone quite well. It, I mean, I have to say the it's not the easiest thing to install because the entry and exit pipes exit through the bottom of the machine. But um, that's basically because what they've done is packaged a system within a metal box. And normally that system would be separate, discrete components within the inside of a recreational vehicle or caravan or lorry or whatever. But... Um, Anyway, so it's all fixed down, screwed down, fixed in place, nice and secure. So the next thing will be to show it running. Okay, my diesel heater is now running. Um, as you can see, I've connected it to a 
car battery using 25 amp clock clips and I have fitted ring terminals to the end of the cable and I used a proper crimp tool not one of these rubbishy ones that flattens things because I want it to be a secure supply one thing we don't want with this is the supply suddenly going tits up while the thing is running full on it needs to shut down in a in a manner that is uh, that cools it so I think the fan rules are runs on after you've switched off the heat so when you've asked to shut down it runs on until it's cool so we need a secure supply and uh, I thought a 12 volt car battery for the minute would be a, the better option um, I haven't quite worked out all the controls yet I haven't read the instructions because, you know, that's not what we do us guys, is it? We don't read instructions. We have a go and then we read the instructions. But it's working quite well. The exhaust pipe is pretty hot, so you don't really want to touch it. It's not setting fire to the wood, which is a plus. And the heat output from this hose, which you can, I can angle about as I wish, is uh, fairly substantial. Now. I can have more heat or less heat out of it, but I set it to a sort of a fairly medium level. It does get quite noisy when you ask it when you, to go flat out. You know, the pump clicks more frequently and the fan really does make quite a lot of noise. But um, I've just set it to a level that will take the chill out of the workshop. So let's have a quick look at the thermometer at the far end of the shop. Right, the external temperature is 6 degrees. This under reads slightly. Um, that's why I've got this gauge, because it was not quite up to snuff. And the internal temperature is about 11 or 12 degrees. So it's made some improvement, because it was cold when I first came in here. And this is what we want, just to take you know, the chill out, that makes it so uncomfortable to work in here. So um, I've got to say, I'm really pleased with that. So if you're thinking of getting one of these, you know, um, do your own research, of course, but uh, I think they're a good, uh, good option. Um, a great way to heat a workshop, especially if you haven't got uh, mains power. You can um, heat your garage or lock up or whatever using this, using a, a, a fully charged up, you know, good quality car battery. Don't you go using something that you've taken out of the car because it was knackered. Um, but, uh, you know, this is a new battery, but I had it in storage because it's um, not in a car at the minute, so there we are. Anyway, um, if you found this uh, helpful, let me know. Um, I'd be pleased to hear from you. And uh, if you just wanted to watch it to see how I've done it, you know, thanks for watching. <laughs>